we are what we eat but how many of us know actually what we are eating how many of us know what food does the environment before it comes to our plate what about the farmer who produces that food on your table how is the food grown there are growing concerns about the health effects of the chemicals used by the farmers in addition to fertilizers farmers often use agrochemicals with minimal or no training and protection one of the most used herbicide is glyphosate commonly known as roundup which attack weeds by preventing them from growing basically by preventing photosynthesis my name is uh, professor alfred dorina isaac a master professor of pharmaceutical sciences uh, in the department of uh, pharmaceutical science and technology of the technical university of kenya and i'm also the director of the school of health sciences and technology because Kenya is, is an agricultural country so there is a lot of heavy use of both uh, pesticides as well as uh, herbicides uh, the difference between those is uh, pesticides are used to kill insects that uh, damage crops and um, herbicides are used for killing weeds uh, other people use them to do their lawn when there's a Growth of wheat there, and the, med, the, the, the active ingredient that is found in uh, herbicides is called glyphosate. So if you if you read the news consistently, you might have seen something that came out today, where uh, there's there's been a court case in the United States of America against manufacturers of Roundup. That is Bayer and a uh, company called Monsanto. And uh, so uh, there, there was a court case that has, uh, was determined, and the individuals were awarded millions of dollars in compensation because they were exposed to to, to herbicides that contain glyphosate, the active ingredient that is found in, uh, in this uh, in Roundup. So what what happens is, um, in as much as these uh, herbicides are used to kill weeds, they do have negative physiological and biochemical effects on humans when you get exposed to it as you use it. If you are spraying, for example, and it get, you get, get you contact with your skin, it gets absorbed, systemat- systemically absorbed into your system, and therefore it can cause those... Uh, one, the, the major concern in the United States is cancer. It has been found to cause what is called non-Hawkins lymphoma. lymphoma. That is a cancer uh, where you have proliferation of lymphocytes. Lymphocytes is a type of white blood cell. And um, it's a blood cancer which is uh, very lethal uh, with a very high mortality rate for those who get it. And uh, so basically what happens is that when you get exposed to these chemicals, specifically talking about herpesites, it interferes with, for example, your neurological function central nervous system it interferes with how that system works including coordination of movement uh, there's some there's what we call oxidative stress where you have uh, accumulation of reactive molecules in your body which damage your your, your, your macromolecules dna proteins lipids. that is what usually results in cancer so our own studies here took that were done by my my, my master student called douglas and Gatoni. We clearly demonstrated that uh, exposure to herbicides in an animal model induces damage to the central nervous system. It induces damage to major organs of the, of the, of the body, liver, uh, kidney, of the brain, etc. Uh, not only that, they actually do interfere with how your immune system works. So when you get exposed to herbicides, they affect how your immune system works. The immune system is very important in protecting you from getting infection from various diseases, including cancer. Your immune system, when it detects abnormal cells in your blood or in your body, is able to identify those cells and destroy them, therefore protecting you from developing cancer. So when herbicides interfere with that process, then you are exposed to infection as well as cancer. In regard to pesticides, uh, pesticides 
I use, uh, you need a very small amount of pesticides to kill an insect, for example, like a mosquito, because they are used to things like mosquitoes. Right? And uh, the way they kill mosquitoes or insects is that pesticides interfere with the interfere with the way the central nervous system works. They basically they interfere with the chemicals that regulate your brain, the, the brain function or the central nervous system function of the insects. But then for humans, these these pesticides are equally harmful to humans if you keep ex consistently being exposed to them over time because they bioaccumulate. Yeah. And uh, so that, that, that's what causes problems with pesticides. In small doses that you expose insects, they may not be harmful to you if, you, for example, you use it once. But with consistent exposure, there's bioaccumulation of those chemicals in your body until they, to, to a certain extent that they, they, they attain significant um, uh, circulation in your, in your physiological system and they start interfering with the way your body functions. I'll say that if, if you're exposed for a short time, some of, the, some of these toxic effects can be reversible because your body is very powerful. It has its own inner systems for, uh, for repair of what has gone wrong with it. So if you get exposed for short durations of time and you remove that exposure, some of this damage is, is, is reversible, yes, it is reversible. But the problem is that, for example, in Kenya, the problem we have is that you are consistently exposed to these things. If you, if you go to the market and buy vegetables which, which was sprayed with a pesticide or insecticide last week, and then you, you, you know we like vegetables, right? You're always eating tomatoes or vegetables which are exposed to these things consistently. So you are consistently exposed. So the damage uh, that will occur because of this consistent exposure, it will get to an extent where it is irreversible. Like now, if you develop cancer, like for example, the apicide that we are talking about that causes non Hawkins lymphoma, it's very difficult to treat blood cancers. Yeah. And the, the mortality rate is very high, so you probably die from it. So at that point, there's nothing you can do, it's irreversible. So what causes irreversible damage is uh, continuous excessive exposure. And that is, that is the problem we have in Kenya. Because we, have, we eat maize, which is treated with uh, insecticides, we eat vegetables, tomatoes, all kind of manner of food. We, have, we, we, we eat chicken. We just been uh, fed with antibiotics uh, uh, that feed that, that actual feeds on feed animal feed, which have been exposed to pesticides or insecticides. Yeah. So this continuous exposure left right from food, from meat, from vegetables uh, is, is potentially very harmful to, to a lot of people. The use of pesticides to produce food, both for local population and for export should comply with good agricultural practices regardless of the economic status of the country. Farmers should limit the amount of pesticides used to the minimum necessary to protect their crops. If possible, the use of pesticides should be avoided. The, the farmers are likely to be exposed more. Like if, it, if it's an herbicide, for example, uh, and the farmer is trying to control weeds in, 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 their, in, their, in their tomato plantation that they're applying it. Uh, and as much as they are also, they get exposed as they apply the herbicide, but they also eat the same food that we in the cities eat. They eat the same tomato, they eat the same vegetables which has been sprayed. So it's like you can you can actually say that they get a double dose of the of the toxic chemicals. So the farmers are potentially more exposed as they do the farming or as they spray, but also they consume the same foods which have been contaminated with those, uh, with those kinds. The national regulator, the Pest Control Products Board, PCPB, is tasked with the responsibility of testing and doing assessment toxicity level when ingested, when inhaled, and the effect to the skin and the central nervous system. It is also tested to establish whether it alters the DNA or causes cancer. But the question is how thorough and how accurate are these tests? Are the rules implemented to the letter? In, in Kenya, we do have 
we have various regulatory bodies which, um, which are supposed to, to ensure that this does not take place. The issue we have in Kenya is implementation. We have laws. We have organizations like KEFIS. We have uh, NEMA. We have uh, National Bell Safety Authority. We have, uh, and very, there are various other organizations uh, which are supposed to enforce and make sure that Kenyans are not exposed to, to chemicals, some of them which are banned elsewhere, but which found their way here in Kenya and they're used for as pesticides, insecticides, or herbicides. So the, the laws are there, the regulations are there. The problem is implementation, making sure that standards are adhered to. If a chemical is banned because it's carcinogenic, for example, in other countries, why should it gain access to Kenya? There are people who are supposed to control that. They are not doing their own. There, there are chemicals in, here in Nairobi or here in Kenya, which are used to ripen fruits. And uh, one of those chemicals is called calcium carbide. It is very difficult to tell which fruits have been exposed and which one have not been exposed. First of all, even before we talk about how you know whether they have been exposed or not, uh, the question we should ask ourselves is that is calcium carbide used in ripening of fruits harmful to, to Kenyans? So the study that we did here at Technical University of Kenya uh, under my supervision, it is very, very clear uh, from our findings that uh, Calcium exposure to calcium carbide impairs your, your your bodily functions. It impairs your central nervous system. It affects the way your central nervous system works. It impairs. It, it interferes with your immune functions. Uh, it interferes with your liver function. In fact, actually causes liver damage from our own experiments here, uh, and many other abnormalities that we noted in our studies. So that is one. So we have established as a university through the research that we are doing here that actually exposure to calcium carbide is harmful to a human using an animal model. The second question was, how do you know? Uh, as I said, it's difficult. But if you look at the fruits which have been right, which, which they have applied that chemical, they look very shiny and very attractive. Yeah, than usual especially bananas and uh, oranges and others. Those that have been, they have applied those chemicals, they look very, very beautiful and attractive. Uh, but sometimes that can, 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 can mislead you. Because I can tell you that uh, use of chemicals to ripen fruit in Kenya, especially in Nairobi, is so rampant, very, very rampant. And it's causing a lot of harm, according to our findings. You, you, you'll never separate agriculture from Kenya. So we need to sensitize the farmers, we need to sensitize the, uh, the, 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 the leaders, the community leaders, the, us, the, the Wananji, we need to be aware of this, uh, these effects. But most importantly, those organizations or bodies who are supposed to be in the forefront of making sure that uh, Kenyans are not exposed to harmful products due to chemical exposure, they do their work and then force and make sure that we eat clean food. People should start to care more about the chemicals used to grow their food and how they affect their health and the environment.